Hi there, this is Mark. Today I'm going to show you how to bind your SEMA X1 quadcopter to the Turnigy 9X radio. Um, the radio that comes with the SEMA X1, uh, this guy right here, is actually a very decent little radio. Um, I mean, they're, you know, it works well. It's got the little LCD display on there, which is kind of fun. And all in all, I mean, just shockingly good considering the, the whole kit, quadcopter and radio, are like 35 bucks off Amazon. Um, if you don't already have a SEMA X1, go do yourself a big favor and buy one immediately. Don't wait, do it now. It's just the most fun I've ever had. It's, it's as much fun, if not more fun, than my bigger quadcopters, and it's virtually indestructible. I've crashed it tons in the house and out, and I've not so much as even broken a prop. So, you know, fantastic little, fantastic little quad. Also, I'd highly recommend it, even if you're building a big quad from scratch, buy one of these and practice. Um, the stick time you get on this will absolutely count towards being able to fly your full-size quadcopter with less crashes. <clears throat> okay, let's get to the binding. Um, first step, if you've ever bound your Turnage D9X to anything, you'll be familiar with the bind button on the back here. Now, this is not actually, this was the Turnage D9X that came without a module, so I ended up having to buy a FlySky module for it. Um, which means now my antenna is completely external, completely external to the radio, and I just have this little nub here where the regular antenna would have been. But it doesn't matter. This uh, this FlySky module is identical to what comes in the Turner G9X, so um, it should work just the same. And the nice thing is too, you could use this module if you have like a JR radio um, that's not a Turner G9X. This module will fit in any JR compatible spot. So anyway, but you want to hold in the bind button. So on this one, it's right here. On the Turner G, it's in the same place. Real big button. Hold it in. Uh, <clears throat> boy, it's hard to do on camera. Hold it in, and then while it's held in, uh, take your radio and turn it on. You got to get past any switch errors or anything you have until you get to the main screen where it's actually transmitting. It doesn't power up the module until this point. Okay, so now because I was holding in the bind button when we finally got to the main screen, the module's in bind mode. Now this one, there's no light or anything to tell you, but it is in bind mode. Okay, now all we do is plug in SEMA X1. And I don't know if you can see that light on there, the way it's flashing. Let me take this body off. Let me see if I can do this. Okay. Now you should be able to see that little LED, right? Okay. So now, when it's blinking at that speed, that means it's bound. So all we need to do now is turn off the radio, since it was in bind mode, and turn it back on, and you'll see the light on the SEMA X1 turn solid. Boom. As soon as it boots up, we got a solid light, and let's take a look and just demonstrate that it's bound. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'll show you also real quick how to bind it back to the stock radio. Okay, in this case, what you need to do, you know, now when the Turnigy, you, it turns on and it's just in bind mode indefinitely once you've put it in bind and until you turn it off and turn it on again. So the timing is pretty loose on that in order, you know, just turn this on at any point and it will bind. When you're binding it back to the original, it's a little more time critical because this radio is just in bind mode every time you turn it on at the very beginning. So just plug in your SEMA X1 and turn this on. And you'll see it bound right back up. So piece of cake. Um, now just for fun, I'm gonna bind it back to the Turnigy because you know that's what I want to fly. So I'll turn this off. I will uh, come turn this baby back on in bind mode. Okay, now I can turn this off and back on and it'll be bound as soon as we get through the startup screen here. See? Voila! Okay, now I'll show you how to configure the model memory on your Turnage D9X, um, how to set up the channels to control the SEMA X1. Um, it's simple, it's just four channel control. It's a basic Futaba order AETR. So that's aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder on channels one through four respectively. Um, the only caveat is that you need to reverse channel 2, the elevator channel. Okay? 
So I will come on here and we will just come down and make our, do a new model down here. How about that, okay? Whoops. Okay. The simplest way if you're running a ER9X like I'm doing here is to come over here on page 10 on your templates page, set the channel order to AETR, right? Now this channel order that you configure here only applies to, an, to a template that you apply. So do that, come up here to simple four channel, template one, apply that template. Okay, so now if we go look uh, through here, well, I'm gonna go up. if we come down here, you will see that uh, it has set up for us a basic four channel uh, model. So, and again, it's aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. Um, so now what you could do is either, and if you don't want to use the templates or you don't have them installed or you're not running ER9X, it's still simple. Just come in and configure each of the channels as shown here. You know, um, the only thing is, so you can either come here and reverse it right here by changing channel two to minus 100% rather than 100%, or um, you can also just come over here on channel two and tell it to invert it right here, okay? So now if I go back out to the main screen, you will see that, uh, so let's see our throttle, you'll see that there on the left um, for channel three. So aileron, um, elevator, and you'll notice elevator now is, I guess you can't see my thumb, but when I push the elevator stick up, you'll see that channel two actually goes down and vice versa. So, because we reversed it, imagine that, right? Um, anyway, the only other thing to be aware of is, uh, that currently I don't seem to find a way to use the little flip button. Um, if you're using the stock transmitter that comes with the SEMA X1, there's a little button on the upper uh, right hand side, a little silver shoulder button up there. And if you press it while you're using uh, the right hand stick, uh, it'll make it do flips, which is super cool. But uh, that does not seem to be something that's, uh, I don't know what they're doing. What I need to do is find a way to hook it up to an oscilloscope and see what's actually going on there so I could duplicate that here. I've spent a little bit of time trying to figure out how to how to get the flips to work on here, but I just, I got no clue what it's, what it's doing. So if I ever figure it out, I will post an update to this video, okay? Um, anyway, like I said before, if you haven't bought yourself a SEMA X1, buy one immediately. It's just absolutely a blast. Okay, uh, over and out. Okay, SEMA X1, turn to G9X.
So one thing to note about the SEMA X1 is every time you plug in a battery, you need to put it on a flat surface just immediately while it calibrates itself until the flashing light turns off. If you don't, you'll run into serious trim things and you can kind of trim it out, but just do yourself a favor and every time you plug in a battery, set it on a flat surface. Um, so yeah, you know, outside here, it's a little bit light. It gets buffeted around a little bit and you see I'm out of juice, out of juice here. And once you run out of battery, it won't actually run anymore. It kind of drops power to make you land and then it won't come back on. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, the SEMA X1, if you're buying one, I'd recommend you get the one with this little spaceship design like this, not the UFO or the bug because, well, the UFO especially. Because this spaceship, what it does for you is gives you a real good sense of orientation. Um, it's real easy to tell which way is forward and which way is backward. Which, with, with, if I take the canopy off and just use the white and black props for orientation, for some reason in my brain, it just is not that easy. I have to really think about it. But with the, with the little plastic canopy on, it's just a piece of cake. Um, so yeah, you know, typically I fly this, I've flown this indoors a lot, um, and it's just fine. I thought I'd come outside today since it's a little bit warmer today. Um, the one thing to note, um, one real big benefit of using the Turnigy 9X, let me get out of the sun, but the, one of the real big benefits to using the Turnigy 9X with the SEMA X1, um, is the one time I came out before with the stock radio, if I went very high up or very far away, like maybe across the street, I would like lose the signal and it would fall out of the sky. So now that said, you can see it's a pretty dense little neighborhood here and everybody's got Wi-Fi. And so the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is pretty crowded. Um, using the Turnigy 9X, I have not been able to comfortably fly it. You know, it, it has a strong signal for as far as I'm comfortable flying it. So. I think that's that right there is a pretty big reason to switch.